Right. Options, we could try and play a 2v2, or you can jump on a ranked again and have another go at uh, possibly Arabia. Or I could watch you play a ranked game. That's also an option. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch one. Okay. Is there like one Sif you, you can't play or don't like playing? I can't play all of them. Right now we have a new Civ called Bengalis. They are a very awkward civilization. They just have a very awkward tech tree. Uh, right now, we are, I've only introduced you to like Byzantines because they don't have any particular economic bonus that would yeah. bring you negative habits in terms of economy management. But uh, yeah, if you play other civs, you'll feel like things might feel smoother on the economy part. Mine's There's actually so, so much we haven't done yet, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> monk conversion, yeah. uh, water wars. Okay, so do playing... you know Inseal? I do not know him, no. Uh, my queue was quite oops. My queue was quite long here, so um, it could be a you're chance. Scouting, you're scouting with sheep. Yeah, like uh, you can use the sheep to scout as well, obviously. Oh, that's a horrible house because it will deny. That's a perfect lumber camp right there. <laughs> that's annoying. Yeah, like usually you use maybe a few of your starting sheep to help scout, and then like just to get that extra bit of scouting information early on. But you don't want to scout too long out on the map, because then the opponent could come by and grab them, right? Right. Technically, he could have run over to you, but it would be a very low win chance mm -hmm. tactic, simply because he cannot anticipate you will be doing it in this direction. Exactly, and he also won't know exactly where I am, right? I'm spawning here. My guesstimate is that he's either down there or down there. Oh, okay, I could okay. run in the completely uh, operate, op uh, opposite direction. Yeah. And it's like, uh, laming is actually a very common strategy in tournaments where people will come running at you, uh, straight to you at the start. They will take their first four sheep and then try to come to your base and steal your resources before going back to their own base. And that seems really annoying. It can be, yeah. It, I mean, laming has been uh, discussed a lot in, the, in this <laughs> game. Because a lot of times games can be won simply like in the first five minutes from successful, very successful laming. Yeah, and it's like extremely RNG based whether you find things or not. But uh, they've done a good job on on maps and tournaments right now, in terms of scripting, where they will more often than not have like elephants spawn to towards the back of your base to reduce mm. the chance of aiming. Uh, right now I'm just lucky because it's a ranked uh, ranked map. Normally the spawn isn't like this uh, in ranked maps, but in tournament maps they try to make sure it's less likely to be lamed. You think they're keeping it like this on ladder because they're not as in tune of why that's important, or they think uh, they should keep it fun for the casual or whatever? Mm, I don't know. I, I don't mind personally. I like that it is a bit of RNG in some cases. Yeah. So you, you saw there. I used the town scene yeah. to help kill the elephant faster. That's a yeah, bit two vo two volleys. Yeah, it's a bit, uh, but only two volleys if you have six villagers exactly garrisoned. If you have seven villagers garrisoned and two volleys, you would kill He's the elephant. Dead. Exactly. Yeah. So I was like small techniques just to be a little bit more efficient. Oh, you keep the other sheep quite far away so they're more easily clickable. As well, but also I don't want them to accidentally like go on the sheep and kill them multiple. Like I want to always maximize the, the efficiency, right? I want to right now, since I have elephant, I have 24 sheep left on this goat. But uh, the, sh the food income from the elephant is faster. So yeah. I want to have all my villagers under the town center working on the elephant. So it doesn't matter if the 24 food sheep gets decayed because taking even one villager off of the boar right now mm -hmm. would uh, constitute a similar decay exactly. on the on the boar. Yeah, so it's more effective for me long like economically to actually just take the uh, yeah. to take the elephant. So you're going for equal villagers on both sides of the mill, one on the left berry, one on the right. Mm -hmm. I will also add two more now, uh, one on each side. I usually keep four to five bills maximum on berries. Yeah. The reason I have four on wood now is not necessarily that I should have four. I could have three, but it's just that I went here to build preemptive houses to start off a wall on the left side. Yeah. And since the villager was there, I might as well just put him to work temporarily. But right now, it would have been fine as well if I put him back on food. Yeah, I, I get it. It's a villager economy thing, economy of walking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm going to check quickly how good my opponent is. He is uh, current ELO 1800, so 1775. So he's quite a bit below me. So on paper, this should you? be... Uh, I am 2489. Oh, yeah. There's a 6700 ELO difference. So this should on paper be a fairly easy win for me. Okay. 
It's that. interesting because the ELO, probably because similar underpinning systems are used, uh, sounds very similar to the current ELO of high-level players in W3 Champions Warcraft 3. Mm -hmm. I assume it's easy to Yeah. Go on. Go ahead. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I just assume since they're both games from about the same time, that uh, they probably used the same system, which was popular then. Well, W3 Champions is using the, the community-based system, so they copied oh, whatever okay. best practices are known now and made personal adjustments uh, based on what the scene needs. So I don't, I don't know whether the AoE2 system has always been the same or if it got revamped with Definitive. Uh, it has always been the same. Okay. So it's probably pretty robust then to have stood the test of time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, a negative thing about an ELO system is like, it doesn't ever reset. It's like, it's there all the time. Like in other mm. games, like AB4 right now are going with seasons, right? Starcraft 2 had seasons. It is well, technically, AB4 didn't, didn't reset because I started playing and it remembered where I was four months ago. So I immediately jumped into deep end. Great. There was no like uh, XP DK, rank DK. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. So you have none on gold, so you're going for a scout rush. Yeah, I'm just going to do the scout build since uh, that's what I showed you. I have a oh, sieve okay. that has a very good economy uh, in the Vikings. They will start, they will get wheelbarrow for free. Oh, so uh, uh, upon reaching feudal? Yeah, exactly. Or, yeah. So, uh, How many chops to down a tree? Uh, it's two. So, making little walls everywhere, the beginnings of. Yeah, exactly. I'm just preparing, like, securing parts of my base. Now I look like I'm feudal age, I'm going scouts. He's just now starting to kind of close his walls, so that village has to be chased home because he cannot finish it. He's going for very ambitious walls. Yeah. Oh, he's going for the men-at-arms opening, which is another common strategy that you'll see. Vanguard men-at-arms. Yeah, exactly. He's trying to use the scout to block my villagers from running. Because uh, the quick, quick wall yeah, can make some cheeky plays to try and like delay his. Uh... <laughs> you cancelled the wall. Yeah, I wanted to have a, a house there instead. So those are walled in now, those villagers. Uh, those are oh, there's three there. Never mind, that's only two of them can work effectively. Uh, they're not stuck. I thought they were stuck. Uh, they would be like they wouldn't be working effectively inside there. Because it's just not enough space for them to like drop off resources and act effectively. So I did mess up my eco a little bit now. I uh, don't have the food income I would like to have to uh, produce scouts. So I'm just gonna use the walls to stay safe for the opening now. While I'm getting my farm eco set up. So I know he has many arms now in my, in my area. And they are not, no threat as long as I don't have exposed villagers. It will only be a real threat if he includes range units with them at this point. Your wood villagers on the left are fully walled off. Yes, they are. Hmm. So they're safe against any form of melee units. Is there smart pathfinding? Like if he clicks past the little top left wall uh, with his uh, units, do the units immediately go for the only opening in your wall? Yes, they or will do be. They mm -hmm. Go ahead. They will be able to know if there's a wall there, whether you have scouted it or not. Yeah. So he's making a bit of a mistake right now. He's actually leaving the, my base. He should just keep applying the pressure here. Yeah. Because now I'm going, okay, I'm just going to finish my wall. I'm completely safe. That wall, that wall should not have been allowed to come up. Exactly. He should have just even put pressure. Like even hitting a building, forcing me to repair something would have been a uh, good value for him. Because right now he'll just left and like, okay, he killed one villager, which is obviously still good damage for him. But, uh, he just left me alone right now. Men in Arms is a opening where you want to just be super aggressive the first couple of minutes. Uh, two pikes? Yeah, he's added pikes as well to counter my scouts. So now I, I can never engage this uh, with just scouts. So I'm just going to carry on making walls to secure my vulnerable areas. And then I will start adding arches now to have a counter to the Men in Arms. Normally you don't necessarily want to be in a situation that I'm, I am where I'm having to wall everything. Yeah. But uh, it's just like... You chose a scout opening and yeah. that was like a premeditated decision because that's what you showed. Exactly. Uh, with Vikings, you don't necessarily have a great stable. So I wouldn't recommend you going scouts with Vikings. Uh, you can do it though because you have a good economy. Oh, that's actually open now. 
we noticed that it could have been dangerous. Uh, Vikings are, it's very common to go for men arms opening with Vikings because they have extra HP on their men arms or infantry. Now you can see I'm clicking inside, the scout doesn't go anywhere else, so I know that he's fully walled. Fully walled off, yeah. yeah. And you make a partial wall partition sometimes, mm -hmm. so that you can cancel them if you get the, the outer wall up eventually. Yeah, yeah. Now he tried to click outside, right? So his units went for the... I have an opening here. So when he ah. clicked outside, his units were going trying to go through that opening. So he kind of ran uh, through my town center. You did that on purpose? Uh, not. It's just more to have a way, way to leave myself. Oh, yeah. oh I failed. <laughs> yeah, so he's to it, it looked like it was closed. Uh, you mean the wall there? Is it because he got in already? Or? Yeah. He got in before I could uh, get the uh, one hammer off on the building. Oh, you have to get one hammer off. Yeah. Like so I, it'll look like a blueprint, I did but this. it's not anything yet. Yeah, I did this, but I didn't get the hit on this one. Ah. So I wasn't so, fully walled. In AoE 4, before you get a hammer off, mm -hmm. from a distance, you magic it into a small HP pool yeah. already. I hated that. Yeah, I imagine. It felt so unintuitive for me. You can see how my eco is kind of like, I got the farming set up, again, I'm... This was a little bit of pressure, but I didn't take much damage. I just set up a nice economy behind this, I'm making a smoothish transition now to range. And I have a great Viking economy with the free wheelbarrow. So you can see my resources are already kind of building up towards Castle Edge. Mm. It's 200 gold? Yeah, 200 gold. And there's, I got some good scouting until now as well. Seeing that he has adding a, added a stable. That's Idra tell that he's planning to switch to stable units in the castle age, so he might be on the way up. Or he's thinking about adding scouts in the feudal age. At this point I would assume that it is for castle age, because we're already at 18 minutes. Um, but it could also be that he just wanted it in case he felt like he wanted to maybe add some scouts. Because he needs two buildings, right? Yeah. For uh, aging up. As well. And Stables could be one of those. Yeah, and he probably just wants to transition into knights anyway on hitting castle age. The civs now is... you're on... mm -hmm. oh. Now you're only doing right click, right click. Yeah. In these numbers, it's more effective to just right click, right click. So I'm nine on gold. That's usually a fairly good number if you're producing archers upon hitting castle age. Yeah, Did you get any upgrades this game? Uh, I, eco upgrades, I have wood and farm upgrade. Oh, yeah. I have the fletching upgrade in the blacksmith. And I'm doing the gold mining upgrade now on the way to Castle Age. Mm. So the gold mining timing is usually like, if you're on the way to Castle Age, that's when you get the gold mining upgrade. That's where gold becomes more important and it doesn't delay your Feudal Age too much. You could do it in Feudal Age, but it would slow down your Castle Age timing quite a bit. Okay. So he did it Castle Age now. He's playing Celts, which is a... Uh, in Arabia 1-1, they're kind of used to cheese a bit. They have faster moving infantry, so you open usually like he did. And then you transition into some sort of knight plus siege combination. Okay. I just noticed the progress bar on Castle Age at the top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't see that before? Yeah, the red bar growing. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna go. I have vision over his front, so I know that there are no, no knights on the way to me yet. And I know that the only army he has in my base are those. So I... Oh, okay, that's a good scout. I was going to say, it feels like you're only scouting one part of his base. Couldn't he have proxied the stable anywhere or leave by another side? He could have tried, but considering that I have scouts on the map, it probably... It's more likely that I would have actually found it. Um, He's I, getting I in would... on your gold. Oh! <laughs> I didn't notice that. <laughs> nice. Okay, so that's where he went. I thought he would try and go around to my woodland. Didn't expect him to come right here. I'm actually gonna trap him inside my base. I have some crossbows there. Okay, we'll get a look. He already, I know that he added a second town center as well. Just wanna get rid of the... How do you know? Uh, I saw it. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. I, I don't recognize the pictograms as much. Like yeah, the... Yeah. The models. Yeah, because I know his starting TC would be not starting next to a woodland, right? Or a gold. Yeah. So I can tell that it was... Uh... Yeah, a little bit there are no sifts that have unpacking buildings? No. 
That's not a thing here. Uh, so I'm going to delete the house just to have faster access to drop a TC there. He's going scouts and knights, which is what I said that Celts usually play this way. I thought you said knights and siege. Yeah, well, scorpions are siege as well. Right, you, you said scouts and knights just now. Oh, there. Oh, yeah, knights and siege. Sorry, my bad. Okay. Yeah, but uh, not... Scorp scorpions, when we played 2 on 2, you said uh, scorpions were not that good? They are in theory not, but Celts have also a bonus where their their siege shoots, I think it's 20% faster. Hmm. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, scorpions, you see, I do take some damage, but if I have spread formation, he can only hit, right now he would only hit one unit at a time, pretty much. Oh yeah. So he doesn't get the same value as he would, like a mangonel could get, for example. So you theory, just made a third TC, right? Yeah. So now I can engage, because now it's like, okay, if you want to shoot, you can only hit one unit. But with the second Scorpion Knight, I probably don't want to engage anymore. Uh, this game is becoming very much an, a game about economy as well now. Because, uh, well, he has defensive siege, so I can't apply too much pressure. And he's also at, already out of town soon as himself. So you just shot and you completely missed him. Yes, because I don't have any of the upgrades that I would require to uh, hit him while he's moving. Did you hear that horse sound? Uh, I did not. My game volume uh, is a I bit low. I guess I might still have uh, main menu music on. So ah. the main menu looping music actually has a, a horse sound that is just like your main hero dying in Warcraft ah. 3. <laughs> so I keep getting like shocked that you lost your hero. Because yes. I hear... <laughs> <laughs> it's just background noise. Yeah. You can turn off like a mute on lost focus. It's an option in oh, the audio I, settings. I always like to have it on. Okay, okay. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm in a position where like I have map control, I have three TCs running, I have 60 villagers. Yeah. With my civilization, uh, I also get free handcart upon hitting Castle Age, like the second What's upgrade. Handcart? It's the second one from Wheelbarrow. Oh, Wheelbarrow gets an upgrade. Yes. Sick. So, uh, that usually will mean that I start getting a lot of resources at some point. As you can see, I'm already up to 800 food. Sorry, one question. Is the lion attacking you at the top yes. of the map? But the villager is fighting but back the... automatically. On okay. top as well, yes. Double attack by the lions. Yeah, I saw the lion coming forward. I was like, I recognize that body language. Like, he's up to no good. Yeah, yeah. So you were saying, uh, with this Sif, mm -hmm. when you get uh, 3 TC and you're in this phase, you wanted to do what? Uh, you can't even play one TC and do this, what I'm doing right now, because with the free handcart upgrade, your economy tends to kind of explode out of control. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy then to just like idle everything and go to Imperial Age. So now that I'm on the way I to... idle everything, you even mean the TCs as well. That's what I mean. Pretty oh, much. Yeah. Okay. Obviously TCs and uh, potentially Archery range production, just to bank up the gold required. Did you ever do that in AoE4, stopping all villager production? Mm, yes, but not as often as I would potentially do in AoE2. I never do that in AoE4. Or StarCraft, almost. I mean, yeah, sometimes in StarCraft, Starcraft but uncommon. Yeah. I mean, StarCraft... Do you make it seem really common here? Uh, it isn't that common. It's just like I'm doing it with... It's civilization-specific, kind of. Uh, I'm doing it with... Oops. I'm doing it with this civ because other free economy upgrades that just means that I suddenly end up floating resources like I'm doing right now. Oh, yeah. And uh, with the timing you get with the faster Imperial Age, uh, you get like a huge tech advantage. And that's in this game, I already probably have a solid lead with economy because of the free eco upgrades and I can just guess that I have macro a little bit better than my opponent. Yeah. And uh, also, obviously, we have access to score here. So, uh, oh, yeah. With that in mind, there's a big chance I'll just straight up win with my uh, upgrades I'm going to get for my Arbalest now, or Crossbowman. Because he will have no answer to those units uh, at his cast stage stage. The Arbalest. Yeah, correct. Because I will have... Get... Hey, we're picking up relics. Yes, we are. So I will, I will How many get... can you fit? I have 10 in each monastery, but there are never 10 relics on a map unless it's like mega random. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some dude's face on his uh, building. Yeah, it's doubt. <laughs> it's doubt and his doubt castles. It's a, it's a strong meme in the age community. Is that a castle, what, what he's building? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I get up, the first upgrades I do... Obviously, I, I could have had a better eco now if I didn't go Imperial Age. But the tech advantage I'm gonna get from this 
is more valuable than the extra 10 villagers and extra 20 units I could have had. Are you Arbalest already? Uh, no, it's on the way. You oh, can see it in the Oh, yeah, it's halfway. halfway. Yeah. Yeah. You get so much extra damage and also plus one range, which brings me to a total eight, eight range. And I will have uh, six attack plus four upon doing chemistry as well. And that's just a huge power spike in uh, against the Castle. Like, Castle's units, unless you have overwhelming numbers, cannot fight against this. Wow. So I, I use... That's why I went for this now as well, simply to just have this timing and probably be the game ending. Um, These 15 units can end the game? Pretty much. Like, I will... I mean, obviously, they will just put me in the clear winning position. Yeah. Right now, because also given how the game was gone, he doesn't really have too many units on the field. So right now, you see, I'm going to idle the gold. I kill a couple of villagers. He's trying to do a counterattack. But the thing is now, since I did those upgrades for my Arbalest, my town centers also do more damage now to his raiding knights. And you can see now he's doing a Mangonel, but I outrange it and I do a lot of damage. Do you so outrange even, it? Yeah. Sick. Mangonels have seven range. So even Mangonels now, in this case, would not be able to take care of this. So what I'm doing now with this technology advantage is pretty much idling his whole economy. Yeah. And How much yeah. armor do his knights have and his villagers? Uh, he has Kelts, so he has plus four. He has four armor, but he doesn't have blood. It says two plus two divided by two plus two. So the first one is melee armor. Second one is uh, Pierce armor. Okay. Sick. So, GG. Yeah, and also he has 100 HP on the knights. Most saves get an upgrade called Bloodlands in the stable, which will give another 20 HP to cover units. Byzantines don't have that, so you haven't seen it uh, up until now. But yeah, this is uh, obviously the, the skill difference was big enough. He had a nice opening with the pressure. And one extra point. Let's go climbing the ladder. <laughs> one, point. one point. I think I got 23 points just now for the, nice. for the W.